Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, his brother died, and then his dog passed away just four months later, but it seems the two are together now. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, if you have a real ghost story, we would love to hear it. Call in at 855 853 4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com because we love to hear those stories. And if you want to be a premium subscriber, you get advanced episodes, access to the archive, no commercials. You could sign up today. Do that through Apple Podcasts if you want to. Try it for three days free. Or you could sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes. Kathy Gordon's here today. Just the intro of that makes me so sad. I I know. You know, I mean, I love the idea that they're together, possibly. You know, that gives you that little bit of comfort. But, oh, gosh. That is way too much. Well, and we talk about visitation dreams all the time. This might be one of the best I've ever heard. Okay, tell me. Like, or best, is that the right word? Because if you have a visitation one of the, dream, one of the most powerful. How about that? Okay, okay, let's go be with better. that. Okay. Because best makes it sound like, yay, I love these. But a visitation dream is because you've lost someone. So it's very impactful. And, yeah. You know, it's not like, yay, that was awesome. Um, yeah. So here's the story, and it says, I was going to call this in, but I was afraid I would forget a lot of the details. I grew up with a brother and a sister. My brother was the oldest. His name was Jody, and his friends called him Joe. My sister's name was Jennifer, and I was the youngest. Jennifer was hard to get along with. She was always fighting with Jody and me. Jennifer and I hadn't talked to each other for about six years. This is where it gets sad. In January 2020, my brother Jody passed away from COVID. I was unable to be with him because of all the restrictions that were in place. We had to say our goodbyes over the internet in a video chat. Jody could not talk because of the oxygen mask he had to wear, so he just wrote his wishes on a piece of paper. One of his wishes was that my sister and I would start talking and getting along. This is where this gets strange. In April 2020, four months after Jody passed, my dog Brittany passed away. Ugh. I kept telling her to go find Jody. It was around Father's Day, and I was having a hard time since it was the first Father's Day without her. Jody must have seen that because a day later I went to bed and Jody brought Brittany to see me. It was strange. Everything had a dark background. And I remember looking down and our bodies had a gold glow. She jumped into my arms and he said, Hey, Rob, I brought somebody to see you. It was very real. I could actually feel her fur. They were both in the younger forms of themselves. I had a conversation with my brother in this dream. Jody asked if I had talked to Jennifer and told me about the fight he and Jennifer had at Christmas. And when I checked what Jody had said to Jennifer, the whole story matched. When Jody left the dream, he took Brittany and said, Well, Rob, we have to go. I gave them both a hug and they both vanished. I then was awake and I went to work with tears in my eyes and I will never forget it. I never believed in this kind of thing until now. That was when I took an interest in your wonderful podcast. Thank you. A few months later, my brother's close friend went to a medium And she said that he had a dog with him. There's a lot more to this story. If you would like to hear it, please get in touch with me. I do have the actual recording of that medium. Thank you for a great show, Robert. Mm. Short little story that's really powerful. So I hope, since it was Jody's wish, I hope he and Jennifer are at least cordial. Whether they'll be close again is hard to know. I know, and and you can't just make a relationship fine because no matter because somebody else wants it yeah you know as as much as they do and i know that jody's intention is really good there and you know that he really really wanted this for them to patch up whatever it takes time because it takes everybody different times to heal over things that have happened and you know i hate it so bad but 
families can be so mean to each other. Why mm -hmm. is that? Like, we're nicer to the guy that's, you know, walking down the street than we are sometimes to our own families. Um, and I don't know. It's just the history and the tensions that can happen in families. But um, I think give it time. And maybe but Jody's wish will come true down the road, did. you know, that it will be better. He must have had a conversation with Jennifer because it said that Jody in the dream had told me about the fight he and Jennifer had at Christmas. When I checked what Jody had said to Jennifer, the whole story matched. So did he mm -hmm. ask Jennifer or was there someone who witnessed the story mm -hmm. or the... The argument, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's very powerful that Jody and his dog came together. And then yeah. his brother's friend went to a medium and Jody came through with a dog. Yeah. So, of course, I would like to hear more of that story. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I definitely want more on that. And I would like to know, like, you know, I, I hope, like I said, um, that that maybe some, you know, some paths have been a little bit cleared between him and Jennifer, maybe a little bit, and, you know, see how it goes. I, But, you know, take your time, do it right. You can mend fences. But as far as visitation dreams go, that one was powerful. Mm hmm And it was interesting, too, that he said they both were their younger selves. And so real, he could was feel his dog's fur. A lot of times you don't get to actually touch them in a dream. Like they'll they'll be there, but you know you can't, right? You know it's like there's this distance between us. Even then they're talking to you. You can't just rush up and hug them and be so happy, you know. But this, you know, to actually be able to hold the dog, I think, was kind of unique. And I like the idea of the two of them together. Oh, gosh, yeah. I love that. Jody's got Brittany mm -hmm. and they're together. Mm -hmm. I think that's sweet. Okay, well, we have got a call. Here it is. Okay. Hey, guys, how are you? I uh, just want to say thank you for everything you do. Um, I listen to you guys all night. Really good time killer when you work overnights, believe me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my story, it starts when I was very young. Um, I come from Peekskill, New York. You know, I lived in this house when we were kids, and it was... It was very weird growing up. It was, I was in fourth grade. Um, I don't even know how old you are in fourth grade, but I was in fourth grade and I'm upstairs in the attic. We had this attic, you know, and it was our, our game room, my brother and I, my older brother, Sean. And, um, you know, so we're upstairs, you know, we were playing all the time. We got like, you know, we got like arcade basketball machine, this and that, blah, blah, blah. You know, old school toy chest. That's a football, you know, like. So I'm upstairs, you know, I, I come home from school, you know, I come home from school and, you know, I'm in fourth grade. No one's home. My mom's at work. My brother is playing basketball with his friend, Justin, uh, you know, and um, so I'm supposed to be cleaning and doing the dishes, doing whatever after I get home to make sure everything's cool. <laughs> and so I'm up in the attic. You know, that's because that's where I go when I get home. I go up to the game room. And so I'm playing with my X-Men and my Power Rangers. And um, and I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm playing, you know, and I hear, uh, I hear this, like, and I'm, like, looking around me, like, what's going on? Like, who was that? You know, I know my brother's not home. I know no one's home. And I got the window open in the attic behind me. You know, which is like facing like the right side of Route 202. So I know that there's cars going by and I knew it wasn't the sound of a car going or anything past me, you know. Um, and and then uh, so I I go back to what I'm doing. You know, I'm playing X-Men, Power Rangers. I remember I had the old school Wolverine and like the White Ranger, right? When the, the old school White Ranger first came out, <laughs> you know, flip head White Ranger, Power Ranger. And um so I keep playing with my toys and, you know, I hear it again. I hear it. Hey, hey. 
and I'm, I'm looking around and I'm like, what the hell? You know, like, I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from and I'm confused. And, you know, on the side, you know, you can picture an attic, you know, like a top of a triangle, you know, uh, where the attics, the lining meets, you know, how you can put, you know, uh, storage on the side. We had sheets, Star Wars sheets, the old school, like 80s Star Wars sheets that would, uh, you know, lining, lining the whole thing. Uh, so, you know, that's where we'd store stuff behind it when we were done playing things like that. Uh, and so I'm sitting there and I hear it again. Hey, hey. And I'm so confused at this point. And I'm, I'm starting to feel really weird because I know there's no one home. I know there's no one home. And I'm still hearing cars go by and I'm like, that's not the same sound. And so I go back to my things, you know, I'm, I'm playing and then I hear, Hey, hey, and I look over and right, I, I, I swear to, oh my God, I'm getting in shows right now. I look over past my left shoulder. I look over and where those Star Wars sheets were, where they meet, right? Right where, where both the sheets will meet up because there was multiple sheets, you know, something was on the back behind it was holding, something was holding the sheet and it showed its face to me. It was like, I, all I could see was its eye, its nose, and like partial side of its face. And then it, once I noticed and recognized it and, and saw it, it let go of the sheet and then it went down. And I will never forget that in my life. It was the scary, one of the scariest things that ever happened to me. <sighs> All right, that's my story for now. I'm sorry uh, if I'm a little emotional. I mean, and this really, uh, really fucked me up as a kid, you know? So, all right, thanks, guys. I love everything you do. Um, I hope to hear from you. Um, I'll, I'll share some more stories. I got a lot more. All right, take care. I bet he does have a lot more stories. My God. And you know what's crazy when... You know, I can read a story, but when you hear someone call in the story and you hear that in their voice, and you could hear that in his voice. I agree. I agree. And a lot of times we, you and I listen to a story and then, you know, we kind of try to go through what, what could be, what could be, could it be this, could it be that. I don't even want to do that with this. No, it's what it was. I agree. What it was, I, I don't know, but it and, happened to him. And you can tell, like you said, by his voice. And, it, you know, and when he said, just thinking about it right now, anytime anybody says that to me, I'm like, oh, hell yeah. You know, because it, it just takes you right back there. And you can just hear it in his voice that he just is back there seeing whatever this was again. But if you had that kind of experience in that house, Lord knows what else happened. Well, the other thing is a lot of these sorts of experiences you have, to me, it's always the amazing attention to detail that we mm -hmm. have. It's so, parts of it are so crystal clear, like the Power Rangers and the Wolverines and the, you know, like he's telling us exactly what was happening, what he was doing, what he was holding you know, because it is so cemented in his brain, that moment. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's just so strong and so powerful. Like, every little thing is is just right there as he was talking about it. Star Wars sheets, you know, and it's so vivid, this memory that he has of this moment. So, yeah, I don't even want to speculate and because there's no way we could ever tell you what that was. I have no idea what that was. I 100% believe this. But man, you could hear that in his voice. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And yes. And yes. Share more. If you have more stories you want to share, please, by all means. We've got one more story, and it says, The wife and I are empty nesters now, and one sunny Saturday, we were watching our grandson, 10, 
and our granddaughter, who was two. She was in my wife's lap reading a book, jabbering away in her tiny baby voice. He was with me in our sunroom working on an art project. He and I were quietly concentrating. The only sound was a baby talking and her baby voice jabbering away. They were in the next room, less than 10 feet away, no door separating us. Suddenly, my grandson and I heard a loud voice call out, and this is all in caps, SHUT THE DOOR! Not only was it loud, but it was in my granddaughter's tiny voice. It wasn't like a sound of someone talking in the next room, but it filled the air of the whole house. It wasn't just her baby voice, but it was like a grown-up with her exact little voice. That is so strange. My grandson's eyes and mine locked, and I asked him if he heard that, and he said yes. I asked Grandma what the baby said. I was excited thinking she just said her first sentence. (laughs) Grandma (laughs) said, the baby said nothing. I said to her, are you sure? And she said, shut the door. (laughs) Shut the door. (laughs) What a delightful way to say your first words. Like, it's echoing throughout the entire house. It's paranormal. And it's like, I hope that was her first words. Because <laughs> if it wasn't, stuff is really effed up here. So the wife says she didn't say anything. Yeah, right. And Did the wife hear it? Well, it says, Grandma said the baby said nothing. I said to her, are you sure? And she said she was sure. And she did not hear her say anything. I turned to him and I asked him what he heard and he heard the baby say, close the door. I explained to grandma what we heard and he asked her again if the baby said anything. Well, grandma was starting to get peeved at me and I knew she had to be right as she usually is. (laughs) So I let it go. Needless to say, I was perplexed that day and I still am as to what exactly happened. Why was it said? Why in a baby voice? Why could we hear it and not grandma less than 10 feet away? Why was it heard on a bright sunny day in a new house built on an ex cornfield with no spiritual connection? Why did the sound of it permeate the house in our minds? Why has it happened again? Why me? I got a strong feeling of vertigo that day and still do when I try to wrap my brain around it. It's like a physical paranormal event that is going on. Whatever this entity is affected me and it still does when I think of it. With the happenings at work and other places in my life, I believe I attracted it. For what purpose, I don't know. Sincerely, Tim. So So many questions. (laughs) Why? Why, why, why? why? Uh, I just see Tim looking up to the heavens with both hands and fists going, why? why? I just don't know the answer, Tim. And the ba- the thing is, is when shit like that happens, you want an answer, but you don't get one. You'll never well, get an answer. I know. And you know, the, the one nice thing in this conversation is that he and the grandson heard it. He's not going crazy, right? They, they actually, it was actually confirmed. But the, the grandma, no who's grandchild right there. just looks at you and lies, right? They, they heard it. He looked up at him. They looked, they, you know, had that mutual look in their eyes when they saw each other. Did you hear that? You know, and they both are like, yeah. And he validated it, told him what he heard, that they'd heard basically the same thing. One said, shut the door. The other said, close the right. door, right? Yeah. Basically, they heard the same thing. But why didn't Grandma, who seemed to be very right close, there. I mean, they're so close he could hear the baby talking. Yeah, and Grandma heard nothing, and both of them heard it very loudly. But Tim has happenings at work and other places in his life, and he believes right. he attracted it. Hmm. I would like Tim to write back and tell us more about these happenings at work and other places as well. Um, And, you know, we have always said, just because it's a cornfield now. Right. An ex-cornfield. Yeah. Just because it's an ex-cornfield now doesn't mean that something else didn't happen there earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. Some sort of battle or some, you know. 
uh, situation of, you know, a covered wagon thing or something that someone passed along the way and they had to bury him. You know, you just don't ever know. What's, uh, what's interesting that kind of stuff. is that Tim and the caller both are still affected by it to this day. Like it yeah. really, really affected them. And I get how it did. I get that. Yeah. You know, so. I just think it's, you know, like I said, it's it's nice that the two of them, you know, he could look at the grandson and, you know, kids don't lie about that stuff. They They don't, that's not even in their head until it happens. And then they go, oh, well, you know, what was that? And so they both heard something. It's weird that the grandma didn't. The baby seemed unaffected, right? Yeah. By whatever it was. But whatever but it was. Tim, Tim, write us back and tell us more things. Maybe we can see uh, connect the dots. Not like we can ever figure out this paranormal shit anyway. We just like we, to talk we about try, it. But you might, we, we might be able to put a couple. Theories. Yeah, we'll throw out some theories. But I don't believe that it was meant for the grandma. Whatever it was was only yeah. really after Tim probably and the grandkid heard it. Shut the door, you know. And was there a door open? We haven't was even there? asked that question. Did you get yeah, up and we, look? We were so wrapped up in it. We didn't even ask a question. <laughs> Did the door need shut? Was the front door wide open? Was something trying to protect you? Yeah. Was the back door open? Did it were let you, your cat out? You know? So many questions. <laughs> there are things. There are things. There, I don't know. Let, let us know more of that one. Well, yeah. if you have a real ghost story, share it with us. Call it in at 855-853-4802. Or you could write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And remember, if you want to be a premium subscriber, there's no commercials. You get advanced episodes and access to the complete archive. You can sign up through Apple Podcasts where you try it for three days free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. For all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you for listening.